Hello, and welcome to episode two of What's Wrong with Battlefield 4. And uh, this one's going to be a little more familiar to most of you, especially my PC players out there, um, particularly if you use a lot of TV missiles or you fly a lot of helicopters. I'm sure you've noticed this at some point. So, uh, of course, this one is, spoiler alert, it's input related too, and it's also uh, based on tick rate. And even further, it's proportional to tick rate. But it's actually a different underlying issue uh, compared to the health issue uh, that we discovered last episode. So um, the basic issue is, and I'm sure most of you have noticed this, uh, if you played back in about 2015 when they introduced a high frequency update patch that enabled higher tick rates, immediately as we went from 30 to say 60 hertz, uh, I'm sure you noticed vehicles felt a little sluggish. Um, they feel kind of heavy, right? And uh, if you want to test it for yourself right now, feel free to join like a 30 hertz server and then maybe 120 hertz or as high of a tick rate as you can find and you'll notice that on the higher tick rate, vehicles do feel pretty slow and, and kind of kind of crap. So uh, there's a solution that a lot of people have been adopting over the years. People have noticed that it's pretty much proportional. And that is that essentially what you can do is multiply your sensitivity by, you know, uh, the new tick rate over the old tick rate. So if, if, it's, if you're on 30 hertz, then you, you double your sensitivity and then it feels kind of like 30 hertz again. Not quite exactly, because it's not quite as precise. And we'll get into that towards the end, but generally it's, it's, that's true. So um, yeah, I guess to understand why that might work, let's go ahead and pop up the, the format here for, or sorry, the formula for actually how mouse sensitivity works. So um, yeah, we'll kind of break this down variable by variable here. So we'll, we'll leave scalar for last and we'll start with mouse sensitivity. So this one's pretty obvious, right? Uh, this one right here, these two. So for, for vehicles and soldiers, it's actually scaled a little differently. So for soldiers, I think this actually ends up being 0 0.091 or something for me, uh, which is you know 9%. So maybe this is on an exact scale of 0 to 1. I haven't really tested that, but uh, vehicles, this is actually 0 0.61. So um, they've applied some sort of multiplier here. Not sure why. Maybe it's a multiplier of, you know, three or something. Maybe my sensitivity is just over 20%. I'm not sure. But um, that's what it ends up being. Again, don't know how that's calculated. Don't really care. And uh, of course, point one in this, in this next spot here is kind of self-explanatory. And then pixels per tick. This is the, this is the interesting, uh, I guess, no, not interesting. This is the uh, kind of how the game understands how far your mouse has moved. And per tick, means server tick. So if you're on a 30 hertz server, it'll be 33 milliseconds, last 33 milliseconds, right? So if you move your mouse um, a certain amount, then of course, basically what I want you to gather from this is as the tick rate is gonna increase on the server side, then your input tick rate also increases. So the time between the ticks lowers. So on 120 hertz, essentially you're gonna have one quarter of the, of the mouse movement if your mouse is moving at the same speed. So that value is gonna be one quarter, right? And it makes sense why this is an issue if you understand how mouse inputs are applied in game. So for soldiers and stuff, I'm not really sure. I don't know why, I don't know exactly the calculations there, how it's applied, but for, for vehicles, I'm sure it's all the same, right? Uh, or maybe not, maybe it's not capped for, uh, for soldiers, but for vehicles it is, right? So zero means no movement at all. So right now we have zero uh, pitch and zero roll um, and zero yaw. So looking up and down here, our pitch is kind of ranging between some values and in a vehicle the maximum is, is, is one or the minimum is minus one so one means you're pitching all the way forward as fast as you can in a helicopter and or in a tv you're you know pitching down with the tv as fast as you can and uh obviously minus one's the opposite you're pitching up as much as you can and same thing with roll left and right right so it's capped between minus one and one so it follows that if this value is you know not being scaled for tick rate and you have less mouse movement per tick, then you're gonna have a lower input value, which is applied to your vehicle. And I'm sure somewhere that's also scaled for tick rate, uh, maybe as you know, deep as in physics itself. So uh, yeah, basically we need something to scale this for the tick rate. And obviously there is something that does this already because for soldiers, you know, the sensitivity is pretty much the same. You don't notice a difference there. And for uh, vehicle gunners, it's also the same. So why does it change for vehicles themselves? And that's, uh, that's a great question. So we're gonna look at that now. So if we hop into EBX here, then you can see that 
uh, there are basically these input configuration maps here uh, that have, here we're looking at for the heli, there is a pitch input. And for your mouse, we can see that there are a couple fields here. Uh, the main one we want to look at is normalize input. And notice how this is false. So this is actually true for all of those things that I mentioned before that aren't affected by tick rate. So um, they are normalized for tick rate. No matter the tick rate, you're going to have the same uh, relatively same gunner input and the same uh, soldier input. Uh, and, and the reason I say generally and, and, and about is because um, the, your mouse input's not a, a floating point. So uh, you're going to have less precision on higher tick rates. So that probably, you know, it may, maybe it kind of balances out, but it's not going to be exactly the same because, you know, in eight milliseconds, you, you may move between zero and like one, two, three, or four pixels. Whereas on 30 hertz, you might move up to say 20. So uh, there's, there's less re resolution there if you're only going between zero and five. Um, but yeah, so your normalized input here is false, but it's true for everything else. So, um, and it kind of makes sense why if we understand how this is used. So if normalized input's true, then essentially what the game does is it takes an extra thing called uh, the normalization factor or normalization, I think it's a f yeah, factor or something like that, and it multiplies uh, or divides that by the server tick time in milliseconds, which uh, for 30 hertz, is, of course, is 33 milliseconds and, and so on. So um, that ends up giving you a much lower number if this normalization is turned on. And that happens to be just fine with however they're applying inputs for soldiers as well as vehicles. It's not really a problem, right? Uh, or at least vehicle gunners anyway. This is for 20%. I mean, you know, this is, this is fine, honestly. And for, for you know, 9%, this is, this is plenty of movement for me. So... Um, it works out here, but for vehicles, if you have, you know, a pitch input of maybe if you're really, really moving your mouse, like 0.1 out of 1, <laughs> you know, you're only using 10% of what the vehicle can do. So it's, it's not ideal. So that's why I'm sure they, they made that decision probably towards the inception of Frostbite to uh, ignore normalization for vehicle inputs like that. Um, or it maybe it could have been more recently, but... Uh, I haven't looked at EBX from, from older titles and stuff like that. But um, yeah, I mean, it makes, again, from a software engineering standpoint too, it makes sense why they did that because another solution I guess could be to, you know, treat inputs a little differently if you're if you're controlling a vehicle that's not normalized. You know, it, one of those those cases like the TV missile or the, the heli, but that's just hacky. And uh, also introduces some pretty strong coupling from input to, you know, the game's implementation, which you course don't want to do so ideally we have a, a uniform uh, input for for mice and then you actually you know apply that differently to to solve this kind of issue but they didn't and I imagine whoever or whichever engineer assuming there's a different one that worked on this normalized input thing and uh, which could have actually been introduced with high frequency update I'm not sure I'm assuming that engineer just didn't you know have the time or uh, to do such a complicated implementation um, or anything else to fix it. But um, what you could have done and what I, I did, and I guess, yeah, they could have done this in, in, in their position is introduce a new variable here called kind of some sort of normalization factor. So if normalization is on, you want to additionally add a new factor to this to kind of balance out that massive divisor that's used for uh, the input normalization. Um, and you don't, you don't see what I'm looking at here, but uh, yeah, so you want to add something else in, in addition to this normalized input thing. And, well, that's just what I did. So here you're looking at a mod from uh, Warsaw Revamp. Here's our modding API. And uh, you'll see here up here we have this target tick rate field and our modifier here. So we've got um, a value of 1,000 times 1 divided by our target tick rate field. And then what this will yield is, say, 60... For 60, it'll yield 16.6. And if you're on 30 hertz, for example, then you're going to be already dividing by 33.3. So if you multiply again by 16.6, effectively you turn that scalar into 0.5. So on 30 hertz, it's going to half your sensitivity, um, which results in pretty much it feeling like 60 hertz on 30 hertz. And it goes both ways, too. If you're on a higher frequency, then it's going to multiply by something greater than 1 to kind of offset that. And... Yeah, as I mentioned, the results of that is vehicles pretty much feel the same on any tick rate now. And I think that's that's a great thing because it enables people to have, you know, play higher tick rates, like 120 hertz if they want to for vehicles or even higher. And they're not going to be basically unusable because at a certain point, you know, you, can, you can't go over 100% vehicle sensitivity. So if you want a really high 
uh, tick rate, then it's not really feasible. Um, and another benefit to this too is as you're looking at the code of the modding API here, you can actually configure this yourself. So if you personally like the ratio of 30 hertz uh, vehicle inputs to the gunner inputs, then you can change that here because these won't change gunner inputs. So if you find on 30 hertz or 60 hertz, no, or 30 hertz instead of 60 hertz, the vehicles feel a little quicker to you, um, but you don't have to raise your uh, your vehicle gunner sensitivity, so you still have pretty good, I guess, precision there, then and you can do that yourself too, just like we've done here. So um, basically, I've just defaulted everything to 60 hertz for now because people are used to 60 hertz by now. I think it's a, a pretty good balance overall too. It's not too slow. So um, of course, the result of that is if you go ahead and try and fire a TV, we're on 200 hertz right now. So uh, if you're in vanilla, this is basically unplayable. And uh, yeah, we can we can curve our TV pretty pretty well. It feels just like 60 hertz. So um, yeah, it's definitely been an interesting one. Um, I've enjoyed looking into this to an extent. Um, but uh, if you have any questions, do let me know, and maybe uh, maybe they fix this in newer games. I'm not sure, but yeah. Take care, guys.